So, some of you might know this, and some of you might not, but YouTube is a goddamned wasteland of insanity. Today I'm here to briefly share my thoughts on and give a recap of a story you might have heard about. In a nutshell, a Destiny 2 YouTuber went full-on Marvel villain arc in a wild quest for revenge that has now resulted in him getting taint-slapped with a $7.6 million lawsuit. Hi, my name is Fallout, and subscribe to my channel if you want to join in and be part of the very cool Destiny 2 community where people never Never act insane or even a little bit bad shit. All right, here's what happened. In March of 2022, multiple Destiny YouTubers, including some people I've met in person and love to death, including Bife and Astacross, apparently got hit with copyright strikes on YouTube. That definitely didn't sit well with them, and they were justifiably pissed off at the time, letting people know on Twitter that their content was getting struck left and right. Again, YouTube can very often feel like the Wild West, and people weren't sure if these copyright claims were coming directly from Bungie or not. The thought at the time was, if they were coming from Bungie, then and just what the f bro? Aside from the uh, bad apples, I'll say, who issue public death threats because game devs won't bring back their favorite D1 exotic, for the most part, there's kind of a unique bond between game devs, content creators, and the community at large. The copyright strikes felt almost like a betrayal of that bond. Bife, especially, had put a ridiculous amount of time putting together a huge lore-focused video called Dynasty that he'd been hyping up for a very long time. When he ran into strike trouble on multiple videos, including Dynasty, I mean, I can only imagine how upset he must have been after spending so much time and effort on that piece of free content for people to watch. Bungie tried to issue a few public statements on Twitter, but the general mood in the community was uneasy. Some people flat out thought that Bungie were her lying, saying publicly that they would never issue those kinds of strikes, but all while secretly doing them anyway in the background for reasons unknown. While eventually everything got sorted out, a wild twist popped out of the woodwork months later in June. The person who was dishing out copyright strikes was a D2 YouTuber who was impersonating being a member of CSC Global. If you don't know, CSC Global is a company that works directly with Bungie. They're in charge of issuing copyright takedowns on YouTube, but they only do so with direct written permission from Bungie's legal department. If you're wondering where I'm reading this from, by the way, it's all from the case write-up, which was filed on June 22nd and apparently is available for public view. And a uh, quick timeout, by the way, the D2 YouTuber responded responsible for issuing these phony takedowns, I'm not going to be using their name, even though a lot of people have already seen it everywhere. I'm just going to call him that guy for the remainder of the video. And also, I shouldn't have to say this, but don't harass the guy. Even if he did f around with the livelihood of people I know and care about, I'm not really down with dogpiling. And believe me, this guy's got enough shit on his plate right now already. So anyway, that guy had a YouTube channel where he would directly upload music from Destiny 2. Between you and me, in the land of content creation, most video game companies are cool with you posting content featuring their games. Nintendo can be kind of weird about it, but I ain't here to talk about that today. But the type of content that we YouTubers make falls under the umbrella of quote, player created content. For example, when I get my my dick kicked in playing 50 goddamn games at Gambit. That is me adding a personal splash of pain and suffering and commentary to a particular area of the game. It definitely ain't Shakespeare, but it is player created content. However, just directly uploading copyrighted video game music to your own YouTube channel, it is widely regarded as something you can't do and monetize. You aren't adding any personal or custom flair to it. You're not reacting to a trailer or sharing your thoughts or your jokes, your commentary, anger, nothing like that. You're just re-uploading standalone copyrighted unaltered content and again, companies usually aren't cool with that, which is to be expected. When that guy got his understandable copyright strikes on YouTube for uploading unaltered copyrighted content, he kind of did nothing at first. It is very rare that I've gotten into trouble on YouTube over the years. One time, I did put out a cyberpunk video with a questionable thumbnail that I thought would be cool, but it turns out it was not. YouTube responded by slapping me on the ass and I learned my goddamn lesson. Point I'm trying to make is most YouTubers, when they get a copy, copyright strike or in trouble for some blatantly copyrighted or not cool content will either just demonetize the video or take it down entirely, depending on what the nature of the content is and the nature of the copyright strike. That guy, however, apparently left all his infringing videos up for the maximum possible time until YouTube pretty much said, well, Jesus, all right, if you're not gonna take him down, we will, and manually pulled his videos that had all been flagged. And now is the point where dramatic music would be playing because given the choice to take either the path of Aragorn or Boromir, Nerd! 
that guy failed the test and went on a path of destruction. He created multiple fake email addresses, pretending he was a member of CSC Global and dished out so many fraudulent copyright strikes, you gotta wonder how much time out of his life it took, 96 overall. As random D2 content creators got their videos flagged, that guy not only continued his weird rampage from the shadows, he jumped onto his soapbox on both Twitter and Discord, sharing his pain and anguish about what was happening to his fellow content creators. I can't tell you how unbelievably weird it is to read through all of these screen capped comments and tweets now knowing that that guy was behind all of it. He was literally describing what he was doing as he was doing it, pretending that he was not doing it. And the sad part is there's a tiny part of me that as a content creator, I get what he was saying. As mentioned earlier, YouTube is kind of jank and smaller content creators can sometimes feel pretty helpless after getting a bogus copyright strike. But that guy's plan to show how broken the system was ended up biting him in the ass big time. After huge community backlash, Bungie hit the pavement hard, working together with YouTube over a long period of time, trying to figure out exactly what the f was going on with these strikes. While that guy thought his anonymity in the vast ocean of YouTube would protect him, he was apparently easily tracked down, leaving behind enough traces for Bungie and Google to quickly identify him as the guy pulling the strings. Google handed Bungie basically all the information on the person who submitted the fraudulent takedown notices. The names were under Jeremy Wyland and Damian Reynolds, aliases that Google was able to hard confirm were created by that guy thanks to the IP address information, which which left no doubt to anyone. And funny enough, as it turns out, multiple email addresses that guy definitely used also appeared in a database of a popular cheating website from one of Bungie's old anti-cheating lawsuits, implying that that guy may have also been involved in ye old cheating epidemic that decimated the PVP scene years ago. As mentioned at the beginning of the story, that guy is now staring down the barrel of a $7.6 million lawsuit. And again, it's kind of up because I get what that guy was originally mad about, even though I don't think his content, i.e. copyrighted music with zero alteration other than being looped, fit the bill of, hey man, I'm just making content. YouTube can be a shit show for smaller content creators, and they really need to clean things up and make those strikes easier to sort out. However, instead of just rallying that as his battle cry, that guy decided he wanted to show people just how bad the situation could get, literally. And the irony is that he kind of got his wish. He wanted to show people that the YouTube copyright system is far from perfect and has the potential to be exploited. And he definitely showed that, but not without consequence. He's like a guy who dines and dashes out of a restaurant to prove that security security needs to be tighter and then he's found by security and now he's stuck with the bill that he himself racked up. It's just so weird, man. I get the point behind his original cause, but it's the same as someone being like, it's too easy to get away with uppercutting the homeless. Watch, I'll show you. And then he goes and uppercuts a homeless guy. I'm not really sure what's going to happen from here, but I hope this is at the very least a mild wake up call to YouTube about their system. If there is any update on the situation, I'll try to keep you in the loop on my Twitch channel. Channel. Glad everything is getting sorted out, but uh, don't f around with fraud. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in game later.